Hey everybody, it's Morgan from Highland Cycles, and I just thought I'd have a little story time with you guys and kind of give you guys the genesis of uh, Highland Cycles. Um, so let's start with the fact that I did not grow up riding dirt bikes or motorcycles of any kind. Uh, my parents actually were super duper against motorcycles. My dad one time said when I asked for a dirt bike or a, I don't even know what it was, maybe a mini bike. When I was a little kid, I asked for one or said that I wanted one, and his quote was, and this is really close to exactly the quote, Morgan, if you save up all your own money and buy the motorcycle all by yourself, you can't park it at this house. <laughs> so that's how I started my life with motorcycles, um, which is zero. I grew up in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I don't really blame my parents for that at all. We lived in the city. There would have been nowhere to ride a dirt bike. We would have had to drive uh, over an hour probably to get to anywhere to ride. Um, they weren't into them, so it didn't really make sense to let your kid have one. I graduated from high school in 1994, left Oklahoma City, moved to Fort Collins, Colorado, and uh, went to school at CSU. And I got my very first motorized two-wheeled thing when I was there. I think I was a sophomore or a junior in college and I wanted a Vespa scooter so bad. I was hardcore into the ska punk world and I wanted a Vespa. So I borrowed money from a friend of mine. I bought a 1979 P200E. If you know what that is, it's actually a super rad bike. A 200cc two-stroke manual transmission scooter. The thing would fly. And I loved it, loved it, loved it. But I didn't really know how to work on it. It was a pain in the butt for maintenance because it was old. So I ended up selling it for a guitar. Went through college, wanted a bike, but there's no way to afford one. I had no money. Uh, so I uh, graduated from college. Uh, my wife and I got married, did our thing. We're dirt broke poor for a long time, lived in Gunnison. And then in 2002, I finally had a decent job. I was a carpenter making decent money. And I decided. I'm buying a dirt bike. I don't care. I just don't care. I'm buying a dirt bike. So I went down to the local Yamaha dealership, Sun Sports, and I walked in. I said, I want a motorcycle that I can ride mostly off-road, but on the road. Uh, I don't know anything about it. What do you suggest? Crazy long story short, I ended up with a brand new 2002 TTR 250. <laughs> and I know that's kind of funny considering, you know, all the stuff I ride today. But honestly, that bike was awesome. It was perfect first bike for me. Uh, it was We made it street legal so I could ride it anywhere. I got my license using that. And then I rode that thing all over the place. I rode it in all the hardest trails in Taylor Park. I had no clue what I was doing. No tools, no nothing. I would just go ride. I rode Fossil Ridge by myself on that motorcycle with no, no tools and no water. <laughs> I had no idea where I was going. It was ridiculous. If you don't know what Fossil Ridge is, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard for me today. Uh, I can't even describe how hard it was being my first time on a dirt bike. Uh, so I taught myself how to ride. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And you have to understand that before I was, before I was into dirt bikes and that kind of sport, I was a climber. I climbed all over the world. I climbed big mountains. Uh, I worked for the National Outdoor Leadership School as a guide and teacher. I've guided big climbs on Aconcagua. Anyway, so I've been an adrenaline junkie forever. And when I got a dirt bike, I didn't really know how much it was going to take over my life. But within a year, I was so consumed with the sport, I could not think of anything else. I started selling climbing gear, selling my skis things like that, because all I wanted to do was put parts on my bike. Um, about a year after I had that TTR, it got stolen in Gunnison, Colorado, which is crazy to even think. And I remember it was about 6.30 in the morning when I realized it was stolen. I was going to work. I realized it was stolen. I went inside, told my wife, and we're both kind of freaking out because, first of all, I'd never had anything stolen before. Second of all, it's Gunnison. Things don't generally get stolen in Gunnison. And I was freaking out. And so we called the cops. We did the whole thing. They came and <clears throat> took my statement, all that stuff. And when we got done, 
I looked at my wife. I'm like, well, I guess I'm just going to go buy another bike. <laughs> and I'll never forget the look on her face. It was a, it's actually a look I've seen now a lot of times. And it was this look of just she couldn't believe what I was saying. First of all, it was going to be a whole bunch of money that we really didn't have. I mean, we had jobs and we're working so we could afford it, but it wasn't a great idea. And then also, she couldn't believe that I was in such a hurry that I had to have one right away. I couldn't wait for the cops to do their thing. But I couldn't. So I bought a WR250 and I needed an upgrade because the TTR was awesome, but it just didn't have the horsepower. It was a little heavy. And with the suspension, the brakes, all that stuff weren't, uh, I was overriding the bike. So I decided I'm getting a WR250F. I rode that bike and I rode it and rode it and rode it. And while I owned that motorcycle, I made up my mind that I was going to change my life. I had been doing construction for quite a few years. I had a degree in natural resource management with a minor in geographic information systems. I could have done a lot of different things. My wife was working for the Forest Service. I could have gone that route. But as the motorcycling sport lifestyle just slowly but very surely took over my soul, I made up my mind that that's it. I, this is all I want to do for a living. And I decided I was going to go back and be a mechanic. I decided I was going to go back to school, uh, figure out how to be a mechanic. I was not a mechanic. I didn't grow up working on things, so I had a lot to learn. But I also knew that while I worked on my bike, I was just as happy as when I was riding it. So I, in the, let's we'll see, winter of 2005, Four, I went. I moved to Phoenix without my wife. She stayed in Gunnison. I moved to Phoenix, and I went to Motorcycle Mechanics Institute for a little over a year. I moved back to Gunnison, uh, still with the same wife, by the way. <laughs> uh, and I moved back to Gunnison, got a job at Sun Sports. Actually, I moved back to Gunnison. I got a job with Gunnison Motorsports as a mechanic, and just poured my life into the sport. I just that was all I wanted to do. That's all I did. I completely quit rock climbing and ice climbing and all that stuff and just focused solely on motorcycles. And I decided I wanted to go racing. So I started racing and having a lot of fun. I was racing the C-Class, didn't really know what I was doing. And I'll never forget the day that it's the first real time riding that I thought, man, I've got to have more horsepower. I mean, I kind of thought that with the TTR, but really it was more of the suspension and the brakes and just it got stolen, so I wanted to upgrade. Um, but I was at the Angel Fire Weeby Race at Angel Fire, New Mexico, and I remember going up the hills, just climbing these, these ski runs and being passed by everybody on 450s and 250s, 252 strokes, things like that, and just being like, this isn't going to work. So I came home. Told my wife that I needed a new bike <laughs> again. And uh, yeah, that, like I said, this is a pattern. <laughs> I bought my first two stroke. I bought a 2006 YZ250. And if I wasn't already in love with the sport, which I was, but if, if I hadn't been, that was the absolute cinch, man. When I bought that two stroke and figured out how to ride it, that was it. I was done. Um, I. Could, literally couldn't think of anything else other than riding. So uh, I rode that bike. Um, I ended up working for both shops in Gunnison. I worked for Gunnison Motorsports, then Sun Sports, then back to Gunnison Motorsports. And in February of 2007, I told my wife that I was going to start my own shop. And I had already been over here in Montrose, already been looking at real estate, already been looking at places to rent. And I talked to the bank. The bank said they'd loan me the money. And I rented this place that we're sitting in right now. Um, we signed a lease. So I moved in March 2007. Really no clue what I was doing. Didn't really. I knew how to fix motorcycles by that point. I felt pretty good about that. But I had no idea how to run a business. I had no clue what social media was. I didn't have any idea what was going on. I just knew that my heart and my soul was calling me to spread the gospel of two wheels. I didn't even know what the gospel of two wheels was at that point, but and I hadn't even put words to that. 
But I knew that that's what I needed to do with my life. And I started the shop. And then if you know anything about a uh, very short history, then you know that in 2008, the economy completely collapsed. <laughs> and I was the new guy on the block here in Montrose. And I have never been so scared in my life. It just, it was like the lights turned off for the motorcycle world here. People just were worried about making their mortgage payments, worried about feeding their families. They were not worried about dirt bikes. Uh, they wanted to be worried about dirt bikes, but they really just couldn't be. And I didn't know what to do. I, there were days, literally I did not know if I was going to be able to keep the lights on here, but I just had to do it. I had to figure it out. And I remember talking to my wife and talking to a counselor, trying to figure out what was going to come on, what we were going to do, and just deciding I was going to stick it out. I was going to figure out a way to do this because there was literally nothing else I wanted to do with my life. I just decided I was going to stick it out. We are going to figure it out. And we put our heads down. We saved money. We I sold every motorcycle I owned, literally every motorcycle I owned, all of them, because I needed to keep the rent paid and the lights on. Uh, I, so for, I don't even know how long it was. It wasn't too terribly long because I sold them all. And then I, I came home. I told my wife that I had sold my YZ250. That was the last bike I had. And this just goes to show you how wonderful my wife is. She looks at me with this look of, I don't even know, despair. I, it's hard to say. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But she looked at me. She's like, Morgan, what are you doing? I'm like, well, we gotta make the rent payment. Gotta. She's like, you you can't sell your only motorcycle. And I'm like, well, I I don't. And she's like, you're crazy. You'll you won't make it without a motorcycle. You can't live without a dirt bike. And I'm like, I know, but I got. And so she's like, all right, well, whatever. She's just super frustrated, and obviously so was I. But it was winter time. I'm like, ah, I'll be all right. Um, and I remember that Christmas. She walks up to me on Christmas Day, not a big Christmas. We had uh, just my son, Thomas, hadn't had our son Ewan yet. And we're Christmas morning, like I said, not a big Christmas <laughs> for my little guy. And she walks up to me, she hands me an envelope, says Merry Christmas. And I open it up and it was a check for a thousand dollars. And I'm like, Ruth, we can't afford it. She's like, listen, we have a savings account. I know times are tight. She's like, but I want you to take this money, go put it down on a new bike, and you can't ever sell it unless you talk to me. And I, I'll never be able to repay her for that, ever, ever, ever in my life. Uh, it was the moment I knew she completely supported me, 100% in what I was doing. And a couple days later, I went down to Davis Service Center, put the money down, and got another YZ250. Um, but I promised her I wasn't going to ride it until I had it paid off because we had to borrow the rest of the money for it. Um, and so I parked the thing over in the shop just over there and looked at it a lot. And I put my head down and I worked like I've never worked before. Um, I don't know how many nights I was down here until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, all into the next spring and summer, I was by myself. I didn't have any employees. I was just working like a dog. And I finally got the thing paid off, and I told her, I, got, I get to go ride the bike. And she just, huge smile on her face, and it was just a wonderful moment. So that's the beginnings, and, you know, obviously the economy started to change and turn around. Things looked up. We've been here now almost 13 years in this location, and now we are growing here on the Internet, growing here on YouTube. And things are going well. And honestly, it's all because of you guys. And I really, really appreciate all the support. You guys have been huge. Uh, the shop is my life. I can can actually say that I'm finding time for other things. <laughs> Obviously, my kids, my wife, uh, some other things in my life to try to balance it out a little bit. But, you know, it's it's been a struggle. It's been hard. Uh, competition comes. Competition goes. We're still here. We're still rocking and rolling, having a blast, still spreading the gospel of two wheels. I just can't thank you guys enough for watching and paying attention and supporting us. It means an absolute ton to me. Uh, 
you know, if, if you need any motivation, watch this again. You can do it. I'm telling you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for watching our stuff. We have a ton of content coming. We're going to keep rolling with this YouTube thing. I hope you guys like it. If you do, go ahead, hit the like button, share this video with your friends. Um, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Make sure you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. We need more people riding dirt bikes. The industry is not getting any bigger right now, and we need to spread that gospel and get people out riding, having fun, using their bodies, using their minds, and burning gas. So guys, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And really, like I said, no matter what, I really hope you find some time to ride your dirt bikes!